Hey everybody, welcome back to Jones Garage and today we're highlighting the diesel Bronco 2. Now right now I got it in uh, outdoor storage behind the shop. Uh, it's on the list of, of uh, projects that are going to be moving back in and getting some work done. But I, I did the swap a little while ago and so I'm going to do a couple part series of showing you how this went and uh, show you what I got done so far. Uh, I was hoping I'd have it like a fully functional vehicle, but I haven't quite made it that far yet. But here is what I've done so far. Hey everybody, welcome back to Gillen's Garage. And on today's episode, big things are happening. Definitely. I got the diesel Ranger in the shop. I got the uh, 90 Bronco 2 already uh, missing. Missing an engine. Yep, transmission's pulled, the hood's off, got the hood off on this one, got the air conditioning disconnected, so I went ahead and just jumped into stuff, everything's been busy, and I gotta just take time, get stuff done. Uh, when I got it, I haven't been videoing a lot, but I thought everybody would be interested in trying to get this 2.3 Mitsubishi, what, 40, 55, five-speed, four-wheel drive set up in the 1990 Bronco, so... Let's give this a whirl. All right, so if you guys have been following along the channel, you saw the Will It Run, and, and I knew it would, but we uh, we got this old 2.3 fired up, checked it out, everything ran pretty good. So the goal today is to get everything freed up, loosened, taken off, and pull the transmission, and uh, what else? Oh, I wanna pull the seats out of the Bronco and the carpet. Uh, that thing's a little gucky inside, so those need cleaned up. All right, it's a new day and the turbo diesel is out of the Ranger, sitting over there on the ground. And what I'm doing right now is I'm moving some of the uh, essential items from this over to the uh, to the Bronco and let me tell you what one thing I worked on last night oh I tell you brutal this right here so this is the passenger side mount for the 2.3 and I tell you what it was a bugger and let me show you so the transmission's still in I made a heck of a mess it's messy man's garage but this thing has oil all over the place and grease and everything so still got to pull the transmission out but um this was right here these two bolts went in there and then these three bolts went through the engine cradle and obviously as you guys know because the engine cradle um supports the twin traction beam uh for the four-wheel drive it's really difficult because they had it in this exact configuration where the the uh, the nuts were inside of the engine cradle. Now, when I put this back together, I'm going to reverse them. This will still go up, but these will go in the opposite configuration because it's a lot easier to get to the back side of this than it is the back side of the engine cradle. So that's a little tip. If I really wanted to, if I wouldn't have been worried about burning the garage down, I'd have just taken my plasma cutter and cut this engine cradle out to make accessing those a lot easier. Because let me tell you what, uh, especially this top one took a long time to get, because you can only uh, turn the uh, ratchet like one click. So it was pretty terrible. But I got that out. Uh, something I was working on, I'll show you like, just for example, on this one, the windshield wiper uh, fluid is there and the power steering reservoir and the coolant were over here. So let's walk over to the Bronco. So on this one, uh, the power or the windshield wiper fluid is here. The radiator coolant is there. And because the 2.9 had a uh, power steering pump with a reservoir on it, you had no need for this, but because I'm using everything from the 2.3 turbo diesel, I had to mount this power steering reservoir uh, tank and bracket. But fortunately I had some extra hardware, 
just did some figuring and pulled the coil. The coil was down here. Obviously, this was originally on the front side of this bracket. That's why there's, uh, um, that's where that was. But I figured why this is about the same size, so that shouldn't hurt anything. Just make sure I have enough coolant in it. And I thought overall that turned out to a pr be a pretty clean install. I guess maybe I could have rattle canned that, but hey, this ain't no show buggy. It's all about getting it going, but I'll be able to just uh, connect this power steering line into the existing. I haven't taken those out because um, I just want to keep all the dirt and debris out of there. I'll be able to run this line back and over to the passenger side power steering pump on the turbo diesel. So that's where we're at now. All right, so, oh yeah, beside my, I uh, took my old uh, Pittsburgh six tons back, you know, the, the recalled ones. I got my brand new, of course, Ford Blue Daytona Jackson. I'm pleased. I like that extra bracing there and the pad and the extra safety clip there. But anyway, I'm, I'm getting sidetracked. So tonight, uh, brand new fuel tank, Amazon, $98. Uh, new sending unit that came off eBay off the top of my head right now. I can't remember what I paid. Obviously these sending units are for, um, the Bronco too. So they're all going to be gas. It had the, uh, positive and negative for the pump. Of course, no need for that. I just broke those off right at the top. Uh, then, uh, reached out to my swedge lock vendor. You got a nice, uh, swedge lock fitting three ace. Fortunately, this is uh, three a stainless, um, pickup tube coming down, went ahead and cut a short piece to get me down. Now I maybe could have put like one of those, uh, filters, like on my OBS Ford truck, but I opted just to keep the, uh, the pickup tube off the bottom fuels better. Now I'll run a filter mid frame after the booster pump, but anyhow, got rid of the unnecessary wires that I didn't need. And Got a pretty nice looking unit here. Of course, don't look in the background, the shop's a mess. So anyhow, I'm gonna drop this in and uh, hopefully get this tank mounted up tonight, but just thought I'd show you what I got going there. Okay, so here's the factory diesel ranger bracket and I took some measurements. This is where the throttle cable goes. This is where the cruise control cable goes. And I took some measurements and it's about two and a quarter inches short. So I went ahead and cut this off and I'm going to go ahead and just extend that back two and a quarter inches and maybe brace it down on the bottom to make sure it's good and rigid. But that's the next step. All right. So I got that, uh, throttle linkage bracket all modified and painted up and you can kind of see where I extended that welded on the back side. It's, uh, it's plenty rigid. It's not going to go anywhere. So, uh, got my distance all set up. So I'm ready to go there. Uh, let's see, as far as some other things I, uh, reinstalled, had a lot of leakage back here on the back of the engine. So, um, went ahead and, and sealed. It was clearly leaking out of the, uh, back of the valve cover for this, uh, I don't know, cam, whatever, but this little piece of rubber here went ahead and, and sealed everything back up nice and tight. Got that taken care of. Uh, <clears throat> new timing belts behind here, a new belt here. Of course, it's got to come off so I can get the other belt behind it, but can't get that on because I'm using that to, to lift the engine. Uh, one of the issues I had was the, uh, the wastegate was locked up. Uh, this was seized. So, um, it, uh, I can pop that off. Hold on. Maybe. All right. So as I was saying, I, I had an issue with the, uh, wastegate was seized up and I wasn't really sure what position it was seized up in, whether it was open or closed. So went ahead and had to knock this plug out 
heat up the housing and just keep working this thing back and forth. Ended up uh, taking this bracket off as well so that uh, I could get plenty of movement and make sure everything was freed up nicely. So I got that done and uh, went ahead and got this broken loose. This was all seized up as well. So it probably needs some permanent adjustments. That's why I didn't put the clip on the end yet, but I had to pop that off. Uh, but got that pretty well squared away. So I'm pretty pleased with that. As you can see, I've got a little bit of preload. If I you look at that, how much I got about oh, 3 16 or quarter inch of preload when I pulled on that. So who knows, this actuator could be set at I don't know, 12, 13 pounds versus nine. I don't, I don't really know. So went ahead and wrapped this uh, because there was a, uh, uh, a heat protector, uh, heat sink, you know, to keep the heat off of the back of the actuator. And that was just rotted off. So I just um, ground off the mounts and then just put some header wrap on it to keep the heat off of that. So hopefully that'll keep this happy. But basically, uh, this thing's ready to go in. Now, this is just a driver, so I didn't go hog wild cleaning it up. So I'm just gonna stick this thing in and see how she goes. All right, guys, so I'm doing the automatic to uh, manual swap. And again, this is a 1990 Bronco. And so I thought I'd show you something that's pretty cool. I don't know if they all have this, but at least this 1990 Bronco, uh, does have the wiring for the um, um, neutral safety switch and the cruise control cancel and all that wiring pre-done. Even though this is an automatic, it already had the manual stuff under the dash. So let me show you. All right, well, I got the, uh, the clutch pedal already in and here's this pigtail. This pigtail was already there and it had this cap on it with that nice little christmas tree on it uh, christmas tree what do they call those barbs or whatever uh clip whatever so it was actually clipped over here hard to tell but right there on that uh on the wiring loom so this connects right to the slave cylinder, or I'm sorry, master cylinder that runs out through there. And so all of this wiring is already in. So all I'll have to do is figure out under the hood, that wiring, <laughs> but this is already done. So if you're gonna do an automatic to manual swap, at least in 1990, this is helping you. All right, guys, back in the shop. The engine is in, I got the, uh, Transmission on the floor here. It's getting ready to go in. So I'm gonna get after it. All right, the payoff is coming. Pretty freaking stoked. I got Ellis here behind me. We just purged out the injectors. We're gonna see if this thing on fire. Yeah. Oh, here we go. All right, so I really can't lie because there's smoke all around, but let's do this. We got to run it. All right. Oh, geez. Ready? Come on, baby. Ah, oh, what the heck? <laughs> Stay tuned for more. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, everybody. Well, that's where we're going to end off uh, this first um, episode of the uh, Diesel Bronco 2 build. 
So stay tuned for the next episode where we iron out the uh, fuel issue and I'm going to replace the injectors and try to button up a couple of loose ends, uh, a little bit of wiring and uh, button that all up and uh, hopefully increase drivability. So thanks a lot.